Hello, everyone. Welcome to another VS Code live stream Thursday. And today we have a very special guest. Um, if you've been watching these live streams, you're probably like, Olivia, you say that every live stream is very special. And it is. But today we have an extra special guest. Um, we're going to be diving into TypeScript beginner crash course today with the one and only Matt Pocock. And checking out the chat here, I can see, Matt, people are pumped for you. We got TypeScript Go. We've got explanation of what the Go is, which is greatest of all time, if y'all aren't familiar. Lovely, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We've got so many people getting so excited in the chat. Um, I was joking with Matt earlier. I was, while we were, you know, kind of backstage before this started, I was like, I feel like we're just kind of like, backstage at a concert or something and that's like the headliner <laughs> and everyone's in the crowd like we want Matt we want Matt that's like what I love it. all of you are doing at home right now because we did this before right it wasn't with you it was with Burke mm -hmm. but I've been on this stream before and I mean that stream just like blew up it like, did it's just had so many views and that was about kind of advanced TypeScript and everyone in that stream was saying can we have more Matt and can yes. we can we do a beginner's stream as well? So that's what today is coming more, to. Please. Yeah. More please. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, Axon. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> um, yes. So if you all were there for our last live stream with Matt, like he said, it was kind of more advanced. So definitely check that out before. But one of our greatest live streams we've had, so much interaction. Um, so definitely hoping to replicate that. Um, we had to have him back just to kind of, you know keep the momentum going and give you all this. So we got a lot of excitement, the TypeScript wizard himself. Um, there is a question here saying they both work for Microsoft. So I work for Microsoft, but Matt does not. So Matt, if you wanna give just kind of a really quick rundown of you know what you do, who you are, why you're here. Sounds good, yep. Um, I do not work for Microsoft. I work uh, for two companies. I work, um, first of all, for Vercel actually. So I joined Vercel on Monday. So I've been there like uh, three days or something. And I work there part-time sort of doing um, developer advocacy work on for Turbo Repo, which is one of Vercel's products. Um, but I'm also two days a week working on a TypeScript course. And this is, I guess, why people call me the TypeScript wizard. I started sharing a load of videos on Twitter uh, about TypeScript and looking at kind of the things that I was looking at as part of my job. And they just went nuts, basically. So people now call me the TypeScript wizard, which is sort of a terrifying position to hold in people's <laughs> imaginations. Like, I can do anything. I really can't. Um, but there are... What I was doing before is I was working at a company called Stately, and I was part of the core team on a library called XState, which is one of the most complicated TypeScript libraries out there. And so I picked up a lot of stuff, learned from some very, very cool people, including people like Anderist, and uh, that's kind of why I'm here. Uh, before I even became a developer, I was a singing teacher and an accent coach for like six years. What? Yeah, you didn't know that. Yeah. No, yeah. I didn't. Fun there fact. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, indeed. So that was that was my whole career before, and now now that I'm coming back to teaching, it feels like I don't know. It's it just feels really nice because it feels mm -hmm. like, I'm like all the pieces this. coming together. All the pieces coming together. Yeah, feels great. That's awesome. I love that. Um, we're getting a, a couple people that are really pumped that we said the advanced TypeScript. Um, just go on our YouTube channel if you're interested in that advanced TypeScript um, and just look through our past live streams and you will find it. It was from, I think, towards the end of April, so a few months ago. Um, and you can find that, check that out. Um, but that was the previous one, that was advanced. So what are you gonna mm -hmm. be going over in today's live stream? Today we are going for a complete beginner's TypeScript crash course, right? We are starting from zero. So if you have no TypeScript experience, then you this is the time to ask your questions. And even if you do have some TypeScript experience, I want you to pay close attention because I'm going to be talking about certain mental models that you need to use with TypeScript to understand its errors, to understand all the things that you run into as an advanced dev day to day, and that will make you faster and more confident with TypeScript. So if you have no experience, great. If you have lots of experience, great. You're all welcome. That's what awesome. I'm pumped to learn a lot in this. This is going to be great. Um, let's see how the chat's going. Oh, people are like, oh, we want more advanced React. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a lot of stuff. Will this be saved to watch later? Yes, all of our live streams are available right after to watch on YouTube. So if you miss any of this, you know, you got to go hop on a meeting or something. Don't worry, come back and watch. Um, and this will all be on demand. So you can watch anytime. So if you miss something, goes over your head or anything like that, 
definitely feel free to rewatch. All right. Um, are we doing generics? I think, I think we, we'll touched on that in the last we one. could do a bit of generics. Generics is like a really wide topic. If we get to like the end of our material, there's some stuff in generics in there, but generics is more of like an advanced topic. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm excited to learn a lot because I consider myself like a step above beginner. So I feel like I'm going to regret saying that because you're going to like quiz me or something and I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so we'll see. But chat, definitely put all your questions in. We'll be asking Matt them throughout. This is definitely an interactive session and a great time to get all your TypeScript questions answered. Um, For sure. So, yeah, and so without further ado, Matt, do you have, do you want to show off some of your stuff? Let's rock and roll. Um, so. Do it. I have a GitHub repo that you can follow along with. Um, let's just do a little tour of the repo that I'm exploring now. I've prepared today uh, nine exercises that are interactive that take you through a beginner's TypeScript. And you can find this on, um, yeah, the, on the link below or at my GitHub organization, which is called Total TypeScript. And by the way, that's the name of the course I'm creating as well, which is called Total TypeScript, which is really like leaning into this whole wizard thing, become the TypeScript wizard at your company. So you can go to totaltypescript.com and like uh, go and subscribe and kind of just look at all these beautiful graphics as this well. This is awesome. You're really, really leaning cool. into this persona. I love it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me right there doing the <laughs> wizard thing. Uh, OK, but the main thing you've got to do with this is I've just opened the terminal here. I'm just going to clear stuff out. Um, we use yarn in this package for like installing things. So you'll just need to run yarn in the terminal to install everything. When you've done that, you can then go into source and we'll start with 01 number.problem.ts. And all you need to do here in order to kind of test if you've passed this is you just need to run yarn exercise 01. And what that'll do is it'll run a couple of tests and run some TypeScript stuff to see if you've passed. So what this means then, we have a problem here. And all you need to do to solve this problem is we need to fix TypeScript because TypeScript is kind of like a language that sits on top of JavaScript. And the way most people think of TypeScript is it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, that English teacher that you hated who was always like scribbling little red lines on your work. It's like that. But if you, if she was watching over or he was watching over your shoulder, you know what I mean? Like all the time. So it's like terrifying, a terrifying <laughs> annoying teacher who's just there like doing all these red lines and they speak in this confusing language and who knows what they're saying. So TypeScript sort of draws your eye towards certain things. And so it's drawing our eye here. We've got this .ts file and we've created a function called add two numbers. We can see that at runtime, um, this, these tests are working. So add two numbers, two and four equals six. Add two numbers, 10 and 10 equals 20. And that's all working at runtime. But at the type level, it's not working. Um, so let's look at these errors. First error, parameter A implicitly has an any type. Olivia, what do you think this error means? I think it means that you didn't really specify what the type is. So it can basically mm. be anything right now. And TypeScript yeah. doesn't like that. That's your your English teacher would be like, no, 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 we gotta explicitly say what this is. Exactly, TypeScript <laughs> forces you to be more strict, right? It That's forces good. you- You started me off easy, that was good. <laughs> it's good. I mean, a lot of people look at this error and they think, I have no idea what's going on. And by the way, actually, I do have an extension as well in VS Code, which is called uh, TS Error Translator. Uh, oh. Oh, is it TypeScript error translator or something? I saw someone, I, I sort of forgot that I did this actually, um, but I do have it. And if I enable it and we hover over that again, where is it? Zero one problem. Then we can see that it's saying, I don't know what type A is supposed to be. What? So I've defaulted it to any. Your TS config file says I should throw an error here. So you that's can install awesome. this today, by the way. So cool. Because um, I feel like that's one of the hardest things is to like, especially when you're picking up any new language, let alone TypeScript. Uh, is what the heck does this error mean? Like, it seems like you should just understand what it is. Exactly. And, and they're often written like by gibberish. developers. And mm -hmm. it's, whereas this is, is I, I find it more friendly. Mm -hmm. So, OK. So what this means then is we need to be able to tell TypeScript what this is. And the way that you do that in the context of functions is you use this syntax. You add a colon. And we're going to say this is a number. We can say b is a number as well. And now, 
I literally I always forget this. Sense. I always want to say int. I always int. forget that it's right. number. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's just it's just number. So that's because in JavaScript, there's nothing. There's no such thing as an int. There's no such thing as a float. Like they're just numbers, really, in JavaScript. Okay. And so that works great. Um, so this number thing is then one of TypeScript's sort of lowest primitives. You have number, you have things like string, you have things like Boolean as well. But in this case, if we do Boolean, ooh, okay, type, argument of type number is not assignable to parameter of type Boolean. I was expecting Boolean, but you pass number. Okay, that's not good. So that what that's saying is TypeScript is kind of enforcing a contract here on our function to make sure our function can't be passed anything bad. Make sense? Yes. Nice. Real quick. Do you have any, for people at home who are like true beginners, just have VS Code, do you have any tips for like what your setup is here? Like any certain extensions they need to get started? There are no extensions you need okay. to get started. Awesome. TypeScript is built into VS Code in uh, an amazing way. So literally my setup is completely clean. Uh, I, I do have some like funky stuff, but like right. nothing to do with it, the actual code, you know? So you saw me install that extension. That's the only mm -hmm. extension that sort of pertains to this. Awesome. So, so. all good. Yeah. Great. Note um, there. So now what I can do is I think I found a good solution. Let me now tab over to the solution itself. Hey, my solution. Of course, because I actually wrote this. I mean, I'm, I'm not going like, to mess <laughs> up my own solution. Uh, then this is, this just works. Okay. So that's great. So we've solved number one. Anyone got any questions about like uh, number one, for instance? That's really um, testing us. Vconfig TS file also. Has here's one. here's a question. I think that this is like one of the heart of TypeScript and one of the like hardest things to get around. Why did it not infer number type automatically? Right? You say return a plus b. That's arithmetic. Like you think it would just be like, oh yeah, these should be numbers. Totally. Yeah. Because it's like so. Okay. I'm. Like if you imagine like TypeScript was like a super brain, you know, like galaxy brain TypeScript, it would go like, okay, I see that A could be anything here. Now A plus B. So plus is an arithmetic function. So both of them must be numbers. Well, it's not actually an arithmetic function. Like uh, A plus B here, it could be a string that you pass in here. And that would result in like first name plus space plus mm -hmm. last name. It can also be used for string concatenation. So TypeScript tends to be on the safe side, which is it doesn't try to over infer. We'll see later down the line that it can do inference and it can like infer like certain things really, really well. For instance, if I say const uh, my string equals uh, Oh, const first name equals Matt. And then if I create a new function called uh, log name, which takes in a string, and uh, name is string, and I'll just console log name. And if we say log name, uh, first name, then it's going to work because this first name is being inferred as a string, which is uh. really, really nice. So I don't need to say this is a string yeah it just so knows you, that if it's you string. assign it at declaration is it it's able to infer it in this instance is that basically uh yes the okay. reason that it doesn't work up here is because this function could be called with anything right okay you know? could literally be called with anything right and so we need to put in a contract into that function to tell it uh how it should be called okay so basically is like only if it knows for certain right so in your previous one it was like okay i knew that this was equal to Matt, which was a string. It's like, I know that that's going to be a string because then right after I use it. But for a function, it doesn't know where it could originate. So in that case, it plays it extra safe, essentially. Exactly. Cool. OK. Makes sense. Um, we got someone say how to test. So maybe you could just show that yarn real quick. Um, yeah, sure. They showed um, at the start again. Well, this, this is a trickier, larger question, because what does this mean? Is this like how to test your application as a whole, has test it at runtime? Um, but one thing you can do is to check that your, um, like one thing that TypeScript lets you do is it lets you turn in your like entire project into your teacher for grading, right? It lets you say, okay, I want to, Please, teacher, can you just sort of see my entire work and point out any errors? Because as we're running in VS Code, it only does it file by file, right? It's only looking at the current file that you're on and sort of transpiling any other files that, that it needs to. But the way we can do that is we can actually run TSC. 
inside here. And my setup is a little bit unique because I've got all of these problems, like uh, I've got loads of stuff with type errors built in. So we're going to get loads of type errors here. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is we can say TSC. And what that'll do, oh, no, yarn, yarn TSC, I think, in order to run it uh, locally. What that's going to do is it's going to check my entire project, and it found 15 errors in nine files. And what that means is I can I, I now know that there's problems in my application that I need to fix. So that's a good way to test your types from the top level. OK, awesome. Um, so maybe you're going to uh, cover this later, but stupid question. This is not a stupid question because I have the exact same question. What mm. happens if you explicitly define it as any? Like, can you just do that, right? Yeah, we can just plonk in an any in there. Now, any is a it's a dangerous type. Um, the reason it's dangerous is because A and B, like you can call this with anything now. So you can say like pass it a string, pass mm -hmm. it an object, pass it an array, whatever. Um, and you'll notice as well that you can, so that that is unsafe already, right? This any is basically telling your teacher, shut up, I know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> It's like, it's like dropping out of school, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's it's useful because you do know more than your teacher, but sometimes it is, it is not good. And in this case, it's really not good. Um, the other reason why this is bad is if we define this as a number here and a number here, then if we say const number equals add two numbers, two and four, then this is actually going to be inferred as a number. You can see, so if I actually just call this num instead, just to reduce the confusion. And on num, we actually get like all of the methods that you're used to on number. So number to, sorry, my thing's balking out a little bit. Yeah, here we go. Like you get to exponential and to fixed, which aren't present if this was a string, for instance. So like const mat, uh, name equals mat, then name dot to exponential, that's a type error because that method doesn't exist on string. Okay. So what we lose there when we have any's, any and any, is this also becomes any. So this is no longer a number. It's actually any's like infect your system. So they get passed down and passed through. And this number now, we also don't get to exponential Potential like that, and I've got a I've got like a typo there, and TypeScript won't warn me about it unless I change these to okay. to exponential, and there we go. So, is there any time when you would use any? There is, but not at this level. You'd only okay. use it in an advanced context. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, we'll take a couple more questions and then um, move on to your next example. This is great. Um, but here's one question. At runtime, A plus B might also fail, right? Um, yeah, TypeScript doesn't add any like runtime checks to mm -hmm. this. When you transpile TypeScript, it's just going to convert this into JavaScript, right? It's not going to add any like type of checks. It doesn't add anything to your bundle size. So sure, you can like, you can really mess things up in TypeScript if you want to. You can say like, Add two numbers. Uh, you can even add like a TS ignore, which ignores the next line. Oh. And you can just go, uh -huh. you know, and just really like screw it all up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of on you, you know. So right. there are linting rules variously where you can like, um, like remove, like it will warn if you use a TS ignore, it will warn if you use an any, that kind of thing. Um, at runtime, like as long as you, uh, fulfill this contract as long as A is a number and as long as B is a number, A plus B is not going to fail. And that's the surety, like that's the confidence that TypeScript gives you. Okay. So basically, as long as you kind of do TypeScript to the book, right? You don't do that any, you don't do all the weird stuff, TS ignore, then yep. TypeScript's going to really help save you from those runtime errors. Exactly. Got and it. like your teacher is not going to get confused, like it's going to make sense to you. I've, nice. I've, I've left the window open, so I'm, I'm just going to close it, by the way. So feel free okay. to just catch a chat. <laughs> Sounds good. Let me see. We have a lot of questions, so I'm just kind of reading through them real quick. Um, I think, okay, here's one question. And I think that I looked through the repo earlier. I think that one of your examples might cover this. Um, my question is, can you tell TypeScript that a variable might be two kinds of types? Yes, we will get there. Okay, cool. 
if, if we get it. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. One, let's, let's do one final question and move on to the next one. Okay. Mm. So if you were to type the method add two numbers as a string, what would happen? Would it just kind of say, no, this is. It would, this, this is now like, it's still valid. You know, this, this is a perfectly valid, like if we rename this to add two strings mm -hmm. and this is perfectly fine. We're just concatenating two strings like right next to each other. Um, so that's, that's perfectly valid. The point at which it's not valid is it's not valid here. So mm -hmm. at the point where we're calling it, TypeScript is going to error and say argument of type number is not assignable to type string. So you can like, TypeScript will error at the most logical point or the most logical point given your code. And that's kind of the, the story here, basically. OK. I don't really remember the syntax completely at TypeScript, but one question I have, so kind of on the same line. So we have like export const add two strings. Mm. Can you, and it says like return A plus B. So like in other languages, right, you put what the return type is in yes. the method that, can you do that in TypeScript? Like can totally, you say, yeah. Okay. So if I go back to add two numbers and we say that these are two numbers, you can just do a little shimmy in there. Okay. And you can say this must return a number. And now if I like uh, wrap this in a string and make it into a string, then it's going to error inside the function, which okay. is really kind of cool because you're now not um, pulling this out into your app, you're saying, this contract must be met inside the function as well as outside. So here, um, type string is not assigned as type number. OK, so basically a lot of different ways you can kind of force it to be something. And depending on where you explicitly type it, it's going to be where that error happens. OK, exactly. cool. OK, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. But keep asking questions. I'll try to circle back to some of them, but definitely want to see what else you got for us, Matt. Sounds good. Um, OK, I've slightly altered the API of the function now. This is on number two, so we need to go into our, our thing here and say yarn e02 or yarn exercise 02. Um, so here it's saying should add the two numbers together, and the tests are passing again, but we've got this error again. Type params implicitly has an any type. So your challenge in the chat is to work out um, there are actually three ways that we can type this, because what we're expecting here is kind of like an object with. Um, first and then second. So how do we type this? Well, have you have you seen this syntax before? Do you know the answer? I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's like, okay, so one no, other question. Absolutely Sorry. not. How dare you how ask you? me? I've got number one down after that. That's <laughs> out the window. <laughs> yeah, so, someone's got it in the chat. Uh, uh, it's a sham. Sorry, I've murdered your name there. Yeah, ob object type. So yeah, this is real close. This is like, um, we now sort of, with object types, we start getting into the kind of more advanced stuff with TypeScript where you can say type params equals, and we can say it's an object here. Now inside this object, we can start to specify attributes of that object. So we can say first is going to be a number, and then second is going to be a number. So, we can then stick it inside here and say params is params. Be nice. So that type there, type params, first and second, that represents an object which we now must pass into here. Okay. So now what we can do is if when we call this add two numbers, if we try and call it like that, then it's going to give us an error saying expected one argument but got two. That's because you can only pass in an object into the first mm -hmm. argument. If I just pass one, then it's going to say type number is not assignable to parameter of type params. So it actually uses the name we've given it in the error, which is quite nice. And then if I do add an object, then it's going to start erroring again, saying type ur is missing the following properties from type params first second. So it's erroring, like our teacher is saying, no, not quite, not quite, not quite, not quite. And then until <laughs> you get there. it. <laughs> what was there? And then of course, if you pass it the wrong thing here, then first type string is not assignable to type number. Uh, so first, what was it, three and three or whatever. There we go. That's one of the ways that you can do this in TypeScript. Um, there are like there are three ways you can express these objects in this syntax here. So the first solution is we've got add two numbers, and we can actually express it in line here. So we don't need to like declare a new type if we don't want to. 
like that, we can just stick that there if we want to, and that will work absolutely fine. Then, if you do if you do that way though, so in the first solution, when you hovered over, it was like, oh, expects type params, right? The name it was yeah. called. Is it gonna still kind of know that that's great question? Okay. And okay. and no, it's not. It's going to what it's going to do is it's going to. I was expecting first number, second number. You see, okay. So it, it basically gives you the literal. And these okay. literals can get freaking massive as well. So it's pretty useful to um, pull these out and define them as types elsewhere. Uh, so that's our first solution. Our second solution is with the type. So I just gave this add two numbers args here. Um, the third solution is with a different type of TypeScript thing, which is called an interface. And an interface uh, is slightly slightly different from type, but you can use it to, it, it can only express objects. So with a type, you can say like type wow equals string, for instance. And then if you go const uh, log, in fact, well, let me call this something reasonable, first name, <laughs> uh, log first name equals uh, name and first name. And you can use this as a kind of like an alias for that type. Oh, and okay. this can be anything. So it can be an object. It can be an array. It can be a number. It could, you know, it could be anything TypeScript represents. You can store a type. Whereas interfaces can only uh, represent objects. Okay. And the reason that there are there is even a difference is you can do things like uh, if I have like interface base up here. You can do some sort of object-oriented stuff here. So imagine I have an ID here. I can say it extends base okay. or, or this sort of nonsense, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but there's like like the question, like one of the number one questions I get asked is like, if someone's already asked it, uh, Bupendra, uh, interface versus type for objects. Yeah, types. that's literally one of these questions. Yeah. Literally, it literally doesn't matter. I thought it mattered until recently, and I think actually in the previous live stream, I, I said a reason why it might matter. But I did some benchmarks recently. The argument was about like performance. It doesn't matter. As long as you're consistent, it's all good. OK, good to know. Cool. So any questions from chat? Um, I think that there's a lot. We do have, I want to do a little shout out to Naresh because He's been following along at home, and he got it all. So <laughs> smashing it. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, we got Burke in the chat. <laughs> love said, it. Most of the stuff is new to me. I love it. Hey, Burke. <laughs> <laughs> my Boys parents. My here. parents when they want to when they went to watch Apocalypse Now. Right, that's a confusing movie. And when they went to watch it, the guy who was putting on the reels got the reels the wrong way around. So they watched the second half of the movie before the first half of the movie. And so people were like coming back from the dead, like Marlon Brando came on and then he, then he went away. And so that's like Burke right now, because Burke has seen like the advanced version and uh -huh. now he's watching the beginner version. You know? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so one question here. Um... So earlier, right, we were kind of talking about like int and float isn't really a thing in TypeScript, it's just a number. So this person said, well, what if I want to add two integers together, but it would error if I sent in floats? Is there a way to do that in TypeScript? Yeah, you you can't really do that with TypeScript unless we get into some really like deep murky waters uh, that's about like opaque types and branded types. So you would need to make a, okay, I'm just going to spew, you would need to make a type predicate that um, forces a number into be a special branded type and you can ping me on twitter about this as well because there's there's like lots of lots of guides about this um, and then you would force that function to only accept that opaque or branded type which would be a float uh so yeah so i'm not going to do yeah. it on this stream but ask me about it okay cool <laughs> um all right let's see there's one that came up i don't remember where i passed it somehow um but someone asked basically um they came from Java and they said, okay, we're seeing this word interface mm -hmm. now. Is there any sort of like correlation to other languages that came before you say interface where you can kind of try to make that connection? I'm like a, uh, I'm just like a JavaScript boy. You know what I mean? I'm not like a- <laughs> Just a simple man. I'm, I'm just a simple man <laughs> choosing an incredibly dynamic language as my only <laughs> language. But you can do things like this. You can do like class, uh, whatever, uh, implements, add two numbers args, you know? So you can do certain things here and you can say, okay, this is erroring because I incorrectly implements it. So I need to add like first, which is one, uh, second or no, first equals one, second equals two, whatever. Um, 
so there are there is some stuff you can do there, but I don't know Java well enough to compare the two. Right. So okay. So there's like a couple of parallels, but for the most part, I think that they're kind of you'll have to rewire your brain a little bit to think about oh. what these mean in TypeScript. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, this this probably is more advanced, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there, and then we can move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to use object deconstruction for parameters, could we specify types in deconstructed syntax? Is that something it's, you want to? It's not recommended, basically. Okay. Um, even if you do deconstruct this, so you have like, and this is a really good question, actually. So if you have like first and second here, if you look at this, um, uh, let me really just like stir the pot for a second. We've got first, second, number, and then second uh, number. So you look at this and you immediately start going, okay, this looks terrifying. Um, but on the left-hand side, you've got the deconstructed um, parameters, right? You've got first and second, which have been deconstructed. If I hover over first, it's going to be, oh, it's, it's hovering as a number. Second, oh, it's hovering as a number as well. And that's because on the right-hand side here, I've got my type declaration. So if I change this back to add two numbers args, um, you can't mix the deconstruction on the left-hand side with this. Like you can't, you can you? No, you can't. Um, so what that means is you're like, you can't say first is a number inside here. That's syntactically just not right. Okay. So you basically can't mix the two. You need to have your, t uh, your runtime on the left-hand side and your type on the right-hand side. Okay, cool. All right, let's do let's do one more because this is kind of before you go into the next one. Um, but this is just kind of you know a question about how do you organize your file structure with you know you're talking about okay types interfaces you can use them just make sure you're consistent. Um, is yeah. there any best practices for someone who's maybe starting out with their new, their you know first TypeScript project how they should be organizing this? I'm such a terrible person to follow on this because <laughs> I'm, I, I'm like. I'm a heathen, right? I think the way you should organize your file structure is you should, you should have one single folder and then everything goes in that folder. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's the Facebook way of doing it, actually. That's yeah. what they do. Uh, so I, I, I don't uh, have any strong opinions of it. Common patterns are to have like a uh, types.ts file if your types are being used in lots and lots of places. But you can think of types as kind of like utility functions. If they are shared across your application, then put them in a single file and pull them all, all out. Uh, if they are only used in one place, then keep them in that one place. So that's my advice. Cool. All right. So let's take a pause on questions then and go on to your next one then, Matt. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. <laughs> We've got a function here called get name, which takes in a params object, which if I just I'm gonna pull this out onto an interface, just be just to be fun. Uh, so get name param. Uh, first string, get name param. Um, and what it's doing is it appears to be erroring here. If I run yarn e03, um, then it's working, but it's erroring because property last is missing in type first. But my test here is saying it should work with just the first name. So what we're getting to here is we need to be able to specify that last is an optional property. Okay. Um, how do we do that? Well, what we can do is we can use a special syntax where we say last here and we just give it a little question mark. Okay. This is a pretty that's simple it? lesson. Yeah, that's it. That's really it. Nothing too crazy here. And it looks like it's working there. Mm -hmm. So we can still pass it. We can still say last in there. And you can see in the list of autocompletes, if I remove this as well, we've got first in there. And last is like question mark, last, last. Are you, are you sure? Would you like to? Yeah. So that's that's basically the lesson here. Cool. We got a couple people following along. Very nice. Great job, Clement nice and Naresh, killing it. Very solid. Yeah. There's no other solution here. This is just this is the one to go for. Cool. Nice. nice. And I like that one. It just. Bam. Yeah. That's no it. time for questions either. Yeah. Let's just yeah. Smash through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Optional params. Oh yeah. Okay. Now here we've got a similar issue, except we're not using an object anymore. We're just using a function, right? We've got get name here, first string, last string. So you can see it's not specified as an object here. These are these are two different um, parameters in that mm -hmm. function. So Olivia, knowing what we know about the optional property, how do you reckon you might do the optional param here? Put a question mark at the optional parameter, last question mark. Oh, and it works. There we, there we go. go. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. I stop at one. There you go. I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're right. I'm I'm at four now. We're, yeah, we're four. really cranking it up. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm an expert now. <laughs> so yeah, you can you can do it like this. If you want to um, give it like an optional property as well. So if imagine if like our last name was always Pocock or whatever, mm -hmm. then uh, you actually don't need to. Um, specify this. It says parameter cannot have a question mark and initializer. Okay. Uh, this is the initializer. So this is like the default value. I really need to add a translation for this as well. It's got a button there that you can contribute if you. Okay. If you're so using basically, it as soon to... as it sees that initialization, it, it knows that. Okay. If you yeah. want anything, it's fine. It knows that you don't need to pass okay. it. Yeah. Except that, of course, our tests will fail as well if I run them because it's expecting name to just be Matt, but it's in, gotcha. in fact Matt Pocock. But now that you've initialized it. Okay. So. By the way, this setup of having your tests like inside your uh, runtime code, this is not like a TypeScript thing. This is just specific to this project. This is just so I can have them all in one file and and, and teach it like this. You shouldn't okay. do this in TypeScript because uh, okay. it just, uh, it's a good call out. <laughs> yeah, just FYI, guys. Uh, so there we go. Any questions about this? I think. Um, Who's Matt Pocock? Yeah, that's <laughs> it's me. Who is Matt Pocock? Who is Matt Pocock? Really. <laughs> Um, there's been a couple of questions throughout this that are, if there's going to be a record of this this um, live stream, just to throw that out there again, yes, this will be available on our YouTube channel right after. So um, definitely check it out. Um, looks like we just dropped a comment on it. Um, okay, here's a question. Can you do optional parameter before a required one? You can't, no, because it doesn't make sense to do that. Mm -hmm. Because if you did do this, first of all, it's going to give you a nice error. Actually, this is one of TypeScript's really nice errors. There you go. A required parameter cannot follow an optional parameter. Um, and the reason that just doesn't make sense is you would have to like pass in like undefined manually here in order to right. get to the one that you actually need. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just doesn't seem to make sense, really. OK. But, um, yeah, so it's a no. Can you have multiple optional parameters? Yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, first, middle, string, last. Yeah, you can do as many as you want. OK, cool. Would it just be when you then, so let's say you only pass in a first and last name, would you be have to specify like last equals? Oh, you yeah, do. Exactly. OK. Yeah, you got to pass undefined. Yeah. OK, cool. OK, let's see. OK, I think that that's, there was one question a little bit earlier, if you want to touch on it. Um, I don't know that you've really shown this too much, but can you just type script question, elaborate on what the decorator marking means? I don't really use it all that much. Um, I'm debating not teaching it in my course because it's pretty rare. Um, and so, no, I guess I can't really elaborate on decorator. Okay, there we go. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> if the wizard doesn't use it, then it <laughs> no, that's I don't, you don't want to get in that position. <laughs> cool. If you want to use decorators, use decorators. The wizard doesn't use it. Christ. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay. Can you have, okay, here's here's an interesting one. Can you have unlimited optional parameters? So yeah. you just kind of have, you know, dot, dot, args. Yeah, let's imagine that this person had like a name that just went on forever, you know, like other names. Um, so how would you type this? Or let's think about actually how we would like think about this in a uh, in JavaScript land. So if we have, oh, sorry, it's got to be other names here. That's the syntax. Um, so it's giving us an error here, which is like rest parameter other names implicitly hasn't any square brackets type. Olivia, what do you think this means? Um, I think that you need to say, OK, well, what types of parameters are going to be here? You can't just say it's mm -hmm. any. But this is going to be like, if we were thinking about this, other names, like what is other names here? So like other names. We've actually got all of the array methods on other names. So other names is actually an array of other parameters, right? That makes sense? Do you have to say like what those other parameters are, though? You do, yeah. Okay. Because currently, it's erroring, right? Our teacher right. is, okay. it knows it's an array of something, but it doesn't quite know what it's, what it's an array of. OK, because it's not is... just going to like infer from like, OK, the first parameter in this was a string, so I bet this is just a bunch of strings. OK. Exactly. No, it's strict, right? It's it's You need to tell it everything. It needs to be really explicit. And so we will get to this. In, in fact, I'm going to leave this as a mystery now. Like this, you, do, you can do this as an array, um, but we'll get to the array syntax later. OK, cool. In fact, because someone actually just just said it in the chat, so Ham Hamita, Hamitaxin, Hamitaxin has got it. Say string array. So this is now okay. an array of strings. 
And we should, I can't be bothered to actually make this work, or can I? Other names zero. Yeah, if other names zero uh, should work with just the first name, we actually still, um, everything still works because we're just saying other names are like uh, along here. And we can go like more names and more names and more names because this bit then gets condensed down into a, an array of strings. Okay. So you probably don't. I mean, I guess when you use that, you'd probably do something like iterative, right? Be like, okay, we're going to iterate through all the other, all the parameters and the other yeah, names and then exactly. them out. Okay. So probably what you do is you'd say return first and then um, other names dot join like this. And that I think will still, yeah, that still passes our tests. Okay, cool. There you go. Doing freaking leak code over here. <laughs> no, you guys are going to test me like this. I know. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, that's the basic thing. Just optional parameters. You can do them with a, a question mark. Cool. All right. I think we're good to to move on to the next one. But just one, someone asked, can you please explain generics? Um, go check out our previous live stream with Matt because he goes into all that advanced stuff. So a lot of good stuff there. Um, I will talk a bit about generics in a bit. But... Oh, there we go. Um, the link to that actual live stream is on the screen right now. So definitely check that out. But still stay here because there's still good stuff in here. Yeah, <laughs> don't leave us for the generics. <laughs> you want fresh pococ. You don't want stale pococ. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. We are about halfway through. As soon as I click over to this, halfway through. Um, so, so far, we've only talked about using... Um, is this right? Yes, yeah, right. We've only talked about um, assigning types inside functions, right? Talking about functions being our main currency of where we're defining our contracts in TypeScript. But you can actually do it in different places too. So here we've got a like a, an object here, default user, and we've got a function. So this, this function called get user ID, it takes in a user type, which we've declared up here, which has ID, first name, last name. Um, but we, it looks like our default user, which we're calling down there, type blah, 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 is missing the following properties from user. ID, first name, last name is admin. So the challenge here is how do we ensure that default user is of type user at this line? How do we move the error from here to here? Because we, what we could do is we could say ID uh, one, or oh, in fact, it's a number, isn't it? Uh, first name, Matt, last name, Pocock. <gasps> can't type is admin true uh, and now it's it's fine because it's comparing user to this type here and it's saying these are the same and so i will allow you to pass it but if i get something wrong here if i say is admin then it's not going to error here it's going to error down there which is potentially confusing so olivia how do we get it to ensure that the error happens here? And I'll give you a clue. It's like, it's going to be some sort of something on this line. Um, do you need to actually say that it's that, is it just called a user? Actually say it's that user type. Mm -hmm. How so would I do that? Knows. <laughs> How would I do that? Um, const default user colon user whoa Ooh. exactly right <laughs> boom exactly yeah. right nice. <laughs> exactly right yeah so what this is doing is it's saying that whatever gets assigned to this parameter or this this variable sorry it has to be of type user so here you are saying this is the point of the contract that i want to want to. so whatever gets assigned to here has to be a user i could change this to a let and because you know in javascript you don't actually need to assign anything to a let like right away you know, this is perfectly fine. But what it's saying is that default user, it's like, it has to be a user in this position. So anytime I assign to it, so default user equals whatever, it's now going to error here, right? So it's going to say it's missing the following properties. Okay. And the cool thing about this too, is that I, I get autocomplete here too, whereas I didn't before, because it now knows what it's supposed to be, which is really cool. If you leave one of those out, does it matter? errors okay. because it's not fulfilling the contract. Whereas okay. if I say is admin, of course, is optional, then that fulfills the contract. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. 
There we go. Questions? Um, okay, so in this solution, right, you kind of have this explicit, we're trying to fix it at this line. Um, someone mm -hmm. asked, well, can we fix it later down at the function? Not really, because like, we're trying to like, call the function with something that's, if I uh, change it back to how it was, um, blip, 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 blip. we sort of can't do that, right? Unless we say, okay, just like chuck in default user and then chuck in all the params that are required, you know? So we can't really fix it down where the function is called. We could fix it here and say, because we don't really need the whole uh, user here, we could just say, we just have an ID, which is string. And then we could pass in the default user. So I'm just say user. Can I type no more? Oh my god. ID whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Um oh sorry, ID number is, is actually what we want. Um so I could do it there, but I, I'm hoping I'm answering the sort of spirit of your question without actually quite understanding what you're asking. Like we could change it in a couple of places, but we're really not going to get, we can't like fix it at the call site. One thing we could do, and this is kind of like a something that other people are suggesting in the chat, is we could do default user as user like this. Okay. Now as is what's called a type, uh, a type cast. And a cast is when you take something and you turn it into something else. It's not a type annotation, it's a type cast. Now, What's the difference then between this and this? Well, this, we're saying to our teacher, this default user, this slot, must be taken up by a user type, something that matches this interface. Um, and in fact, if I split this out into let, this will be clearer too. But if we just say, uh, yeah, this is a user, and if we just say default user is uh, ID 1, and this is going to fail because ID one is missing some properties. But if we just say to this, if we just say as user, then we actually lie to our teacher a little bit. We say, no, it has got is admin on it. It has got first name on it. It has got all that stuff. And so I this. I promise I did my homework. I promise. I it's did at the turn of my it bag. in. You I, must like, have lost it. <laughs> it's like my grandma's really ill, and like I just I, yeah. You know, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, and so this is it's kind of lying to it and it's saying um, this little thing here that I'm trying to assign to default user it is that type. So you've got to be really careful with using as because it is a, um, it's like using, what do you call it? Uh, exclamation important in CSS, you know? It's like it overrides things. Whereas probably what you should be doing is, it's, it's useful in, in lots of places, but mostly in advanced stuff. Um, but what you probably should be doing is using this colon syntax instead because okay. it's a bit safer. OK, that makes sense. OK, a couple people have kind of plus one to this question. Um, mm. OK, so let's say you just say, you know, let default user user and you pass it to that get user ID. What will it return? Like, are, are any of those kind of initialized, right, or anything? Or will it just? Uh, let's see. So let's pass it to get user ID. Oh, I see. So don't don't give it an initial. Yeah, value. just like do it like that. Is it going to automatically, you know, initialize the ID to zero or something? User ID uh, default user. So this is interesting because inside um, TypeScript has this concept called like scopes, which is this is like a scope, right? We are inside like uh, a scope like this, you know. And so functions have scopes too, and. Then you're inside the same scope as something that hasn't been initialized yet, and you try to use it as that type, then it's going to say variable default user is used before being assigned. Okay. We haven't actually assigned it anything yet. And TypeScript is really clever about this stuff. But you'll notice it's actually not doing that in a different scope. So that's a different function scope. And it, again, is not overstepping its bounds. It's like, oh, maybe you've assigned it in some other function scope okay. or whatever, you know what I mean? Because that is not technically like synchronous. So it's it's just not tracking it that hard. But if you use it in the same scope, then it will error. OK. So complicated question, so, but yeah, that's so really useful. The one that is in the, it should get the user ID scope. Would that error if you ran this, even though there's not like a? Yeah, so uh, it should do uh, if I run the right exercise. So it's failing because 
get user ID there. In fact, if I remove this one, it's still going to fail, I think. Yeah, there we go. We've actually okay. ended up passing undefined into okay. that. So this is kind of an example of like, even though TypeScript can help you, you know, stop those runtime errors, there's still ways that it can get through. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So we've got about 10 minutes left. <laughs> um, so do you maybe want to try to do one more example, maybe two if we're lucky? Sounds good. Yeah. So this was um, something that we looked at actually before, and this was a question that we got before, mm -hmm. which was, how do you express that a type can be more than one thing? Um, it can be like one of several things. This user interface here, we've got this role and we're saying it's a string right now. But what we want to ensure is that role is only one of these possible types. It's only either admin or it's user or it's super admin. So literally only those literal strings. Now, the way that we ensure that that's possible is first of all, we don't need to say that this is a string here. We can actually just type in a literal and we can say admin. Okay, role is admin. And that means that if I pass anything that isn't admin, then it's going to yell at me. And actually, I even get autocomplete on the options here. So that's pretty cool. So if I say, then it's going to yell at me okay. because type is not assignable to type admin. Okay. But this isn't the full picture, right? Because I should be able to pass in user here and it should just work. So the way that you do this in TypeScript is you use what's called a union type. Now, a union type is basically like a little or operator here. It's special to TypeScript, this syntax. And it says admin or user. And we can even throw in a third one, super admin. And now this means that this contract, this little role here, like this will be valid as long as I pass in one of those three things. So we say like, and we even get them as options here in VS Code, oh. which is super nice. So we can say admin or user or role. And if I mess it up, then it's going to say um, type blah, 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 is not assignable to type admin or user or super admin. And of course, I can even extract that into a type if I want to. So I can say type role is this. And we okay. pass in role and we stick it in there. And okay. now it should error with type blah, 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 is not assignable to type role, which is useful. OK, cool. So it still will. OK, so you can either bump that out into its own type. And then that type is a union of multiple literals. Exactly. And then you use that type in you know your interface. OK. Exactly. And I can even use that type just individually if I want to. So it's like con uh, log role, which is a fun thing to say. Uh, then we say role is role. And now I can only call log role with either admin, super admin, or user. OK, cool. The same deal, same errors. OK, so someone said much better than using enums. Mm -hmm. I think people say enums, but I always say enums, but whatever. I always say um, enums, yeah. OK, yeah. <laughs> if the wizard says enums, you know, <laughs> There we go. There we go. So it is. Um, <laughs> so is that kind of a good comparison to kind of compare this to enums? Um, yeah, there is actually an enum constructor in TypeScript itself. So we can say enum role is like admin or user or super admin. I think that's not going to work, but if I do that, it'll work. Um, and then, but I, I have some opinions about enums, which I don't usually like to teach them. And I think the TypeScript crew sort of regretted adding them because they are a bit of a runtime feature. And I think if TypeScript were around today, enums probably wouldn't be added. But that's 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 my spicy take, you know. Um, <laughs> but I I prefer using string unions here. Okay. So this is someone else's spicy take. They say that they prefer enums better than union because if you change one union, you need to change everywhere else. Thoughts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's the counter argument, which okay. is like. Uh, uh, I don't really want to go into this on a beginner stream, but there, if you know as a beginner that there's some sort of like argument about enum versus union types, I think actually I talked about this on the other stream as well. So like you, you can go and reference that. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask me about this on Twitter too. Cool. Yeah, this is a spicy take because we're getting a lot of people in the chat. <laughs> um, okay. So here's one question um, not related to enums. Um, what if we want to give special property to user or admin? All right, we're in the last five minutes. Let's get a little bit crazy. Um, okay. You can do uh, union types at the at the object level. 
So what you can say is if we say type user equals an object here, and I'm specifically choosing um, type user because we're actually going to put a little thing there. And we're going to say role is, or rather, actually, okay, let's get crazy. We're going to say that user, whatever your user type is, you're going to need all of these properties. So we need an ID on our users. We need a first name on our users. We need a last name on our users. And what we're going to say is we're going to say and there. Now, that and gives us the ability to merge this with a different object type. So I can say this now, if we need like a role, we can say role. And now user, you can see if you hover over it, is it's these three properties and this three properties, which is exactly the same as saying, like, just having this in there, you know? Does that make sense right. as, a, as a concept so far? Just that this yes. is what's called an intersection type. You're merging the two types. Why? OK, why would you do that, though? Sorry. <laughs> I'll, show, I'll show you why. Okay. Because we're going to need it in a second now. Inside here, we're going to say role is admin. And let's say uh, admins need to pass a admin password here, uh, which is going to be a string. Now, stop removing my brackets. How dare you? Um, inside here, we're going to resolve this by saying role is a user or role is a super admin. And super admins actually need a super admin password. Oh. So what we've got here is we've got this sort of base type here. And we're intersecting that with this type, which can be one of three possible things. It can be either a role, which is admin, or admin password string, and you need to pass that as well, or role user, which you don't need to pass anything. Okay. Or role super admin, where you also need to pass a super admin password. This is what's called a discriminated union. It's discriminated because we're discriminating based on a common key between them. So if role is this, then we need this. If role is this, then we need nothing. If role is this, then we need this. And the way this plays out in practice is super cool because we can say that role is user. And then we've satisfied the contract because we don't need to pass anything extra. Or we can say that role is super admin, and it will give us autocomplete for super admin password, but not anything else. Or we can say role is admin, and it'll give us admin password. Okay, admin. so as soon as you say that, it's like, okay, I can read that. Was it discriminate something? What was it called? Discriminated union. Discriminated so, union, okay. Yeah. So we have a union here, and this is the thing it's discriminating on. It's basically... Okay. If you imagine it's like Doctor Strange, like looking at all the possible futures for what this type can be. Okay. And it's like, okay, we can either go down this future or go down this future or go down this future. Cool. And okay. It's oh, so cool. And That's all of awesome. the futures have names, essentially. Uh -huh. So the admin future, the user future, and the super admin future. Okay. So so one question someone has, oops, not that one. Um, <laughs> people are putting chat in so quickly that like as soon as I click, there's a different thing. <laughs> okay. So can you still do this with that role type declaration? So like pumping this out into its own type and then? Um, you sort of can because, but you sort of can't really. So what you'd need to do is say like role attributes uh, and like you've got, yeah, equals this and that will work. And then you would say and role attributes. So you would say user role attributes, let's say. You can't really associate this with the role or no. Okay, no, this is really clever. OK, we're getting, we're getting into the more advanced stuff, but I don't care. Um, what you would then say is because you've got these user role attributes, somehow you need to extract admin user and super admin from them, because role currently is unresolved. Like, we can't find what, what role is. So what you do is you say type role equals user role attributes. And what you kind of need to do, this is an object that always contains a role property. It's always got role in it. And you can actually do um, indexed access like on TypeScript. In, in JavaScript, what you would say is like dot role mm -hmm. like this. But this isn't valid TypeScript. So instead, you need to use this syntax, role. Oh. Now, role is admin or user or super admin. And we've okay. derived one type from another, okay. which is Dang, that's good. OK, so, OK, I think I get it. That makes sense. That's crazy, though. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. There's there's this. 
when you get deeper into TypeScript, you'll learn there's this whole other meta programming universe happening. Like outside of, like when you get into library TypeScript, there's this whole other universe. And this is like your first taste of it. TypeScript is an obscenely powerful language. Um, and it operates a lot on the type level. Okay, my mind is blown. Okay, this is like, this was a great, great note to end on. Um, just one shout out. I love it when you guys are putting in the, your answers in the chat. I love it when I see this. Thanks for playing along. Um, okay, so this was awesome. I learned so much, Matt, thank you. Um, are there any parting notes that you have? Cause we're kind of right at time for yeah. either like one last thing you wanna show or just you know where people can go next to learn even more. Well, it's been uh, like, uh, what, what, do you, what do you say when people like, people ask me when my course is coming out every day, you know, it's like, this is the total TypeScript course. Someone literally just said it in the chat as well. Uh, I've like, you can sign up for updates like right here. Um, and you should, this is, this is gonna be a, a course that goes right from where we just started, like beginner level, all the way up to advanced. Okay. So I'm super excited to release it, but it's gonna take me some time because it's gonna be like, um, massive in scope. Like it's going to take in everything that you could possibly need to know, you know, from Olivia one level all the way up to, you know, Olivia four level up to That's Olivia. That's what we should call so, it. Please <laughs> yeah, rework your entire modules. course to rename those levels. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> but all, all the way up to like contributing to open source libraries to like all the crazy stuff that, that I've shown, like the, like if there are wizards in the chat, they're going, oh yeah, of course you can do that with the unions. That's so obvious, you know, but um. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I guess this is the thing. Also, you should check out Turbo Repo on, on Vercel, which is kind of my day job. Um, but thank you so much for having me on. This was super, awesome. super fun. Yes, I am sure we are going to get more requests for you to come back on. Um, so just one last kind of um, pivot because everyone's been asking in the chat. Once again, um, you can access these live streams on our YouTube channel. So definitely make sure that you subscribe to that. You can access this one on demand as well as Matt's previous one from April, where we go into those more advanced topics like generics that you all have been asking about. Um, so definitely check out that. Um, and then, you know, shameless plug, we're also on TikTok. So go ahead and follow us there too. Um, if you want to see us doing that. Um, but Matt, thank you so much for coming. This was great. Um, you can go ahead and follow him on Twitter if you want to kind of stay in touch, ask him questions um, and stay on top of when we will be seeing this total TypeScript. Um, so thank you all for joining. Thank you again, Matt. And we will see you next week for another live stream. Thanks so much, guys.